we are going to give you an overview um, concerning the different types of money market instruments that you are going to do calculations about. Um, the first two that we want you to be able to dis distinguish between are discount instruments and interest add-on instruments. Right, now as we've said, both of these are money market instruments, so they are short-term instruments. Um, both of them will be issued at a certain value, so there will be an issued date, and there will be a certain date at which it will mature, and we call that the maturity date. So that's going to apply to both of them. Right, now if we look at a discount instrument, when it is issued, you are going to pay less than the amount that you will receive on the maturity date. That is why it is a discount instrument. Now first we have to look at what you will get on the maturity date. Now, every instrument will have a nominal value. Now, in the days before computers, it was easy to identify the nominal value of an instrument because it was the value that was printed on the contract, on the piece of paper that you would, that you would have received for the instrument. Now, nowadays, all instruments are not printed any longer. You don't have a printout of your instrument. It just may belong to you because there is a, um, a contract on a computer. But still, the nominal value will that be that amount that will appear on the contract. So, for a discount instrument, the nominal value, it's also called the face value, will be the amount that you will receive on the maturity date. So, on the maturity date for a discount instrument, you will receive the nominal value. And when you buy it, before that, when it's issued, you're going to pay the nominal value minus a discount. And that discount is going to be determined by the discount rate. Any time when it trades before the maturity date, between the issue date and the maturity date, when it trades in the secondary market, it's going to trade also at a discount, so you will pay less than the nominal value because you want to earn a return on that and that is going to be, the, the, this discount that you, that you receive will determine the return that you earn on this discount instrument. Now let's look at an interest add-on instrument. With an interest add-on instrument, the nominal value will be the price at which it is issued. So that will be the amount that the issuer will receive on the issue date. And then on the maturity date, the maturity value is going to be equal to the nominal value plus interest. Right, now if this instrument trades in the secondary market, it's going to trade at a amount that will be less than the maturity value. So if you calculate the price at which an interest add-on instrument trades in the secondary market, you're going to have to know the maturity value that you will receive on the maturity date, if you still hold it then, and you're going to use the interest rate at which it trades in the secondary market to determine how much less you will pay for it than the maturity value. Right. Then the third type of instrument that we do um, concerning money market instrument is an instrument that is mostly used by banks when they have a deficit to finance and we call that repurchase agreements. 
Right, now let's say we have bank A. And bank A is experiencing a deficit. And we have bank B, which has a surplus. Right, now what happens now is that bank A sell certain assets. We call these the underlying assets. They sell these assets to bank B and they will receive the market value of these assets from bank B. Now this is called the first leg of the transaction. And because it's a repurchase agreement, already when this first leg takes place, there is an agreement in place that in the second leg, Bank A is going to buy these assets back from Bank B. So these assets are going to flow back to Bank A and Bank A is going to repay Bank B the market value that was paid in leg 1, which we also call in, as you will see in the formulas later on, plus interest at the repo rate or repurchase rate. Right, so in order to determine the amount that will flow in the second leg, you need to know what was paid in the first leg, and you need to know what the repurchase rate is. Right, now we're going to do in these um, web pages, we're going to explain to you how to do different calculations concerning the discount instruments, interest out on instruments, and repurchase agreements, so that you will be able to compare the different instruments with each other.